Welcome to section 6, which is use congruent triangles. Today's objective is to prove parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we are still working on congruent triangles. We're just adding another part in. We're learning a new theorem called CPCPC. This theorem tells us that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the theorem says exactly what it's called. So that's actually the name of the theorem. So you're going to have to remember that, so bold that or write it down or star it. But it tells us if I have two congruent triangles, all of their corresponding parts are congruent. All of their angles are congruent. All of their sides are congruent. So you should already know that. What's really important about this theorem is that it only applies to congruent triangles. So kind of like with HL, when we did HL, you had to first prove that the triangles were right before you could use the theorem. For this theorem, you first have to prove that the triangles are congruent before you can use CPCTC. So let's look at example one. It says, which triangles would you need to prove congruent in order to prove the following congruence? So we want to prove that angles A and D are congruent. So really, I'm asking myself, those are corresponding parts of which two triangles? Well, those are the corresponding parts of the left triangle and the right triangle. So I would need to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to, now looking at the order, A, B, C, I went one tick mark middle, two tick marks, so D, B, C, one tick mark middle, two. So I would have to first prove this congruence before I could show that A and D were congruent. I know this is a little bit of a confusing concept, so I think we should jump into a proof example to show, you, to show us a little bit better how we're going to use CPCTC. Okay, so here's the figure we are given, and we're asked to prove that triangles A and C are congruent. So first, we're going to start by writing down what we know. Well, I know that AB is congruent to BC. Why? Because that's given in the figure. I also know that AD is congruent to DC. That is given in the figure. I want to prove that angles A and C are congruent. Those are going to be corresponding parts of the left triangle and the right triangle. So I need to first prove that the left and right triangle are congruent. Now, the ways I know to prove congruency so far are SSS, SAS, HL, ASA, and AAS. So, is there anything else I know about the figure? I do not know that A and C are congruent, so you cannot use that. That's what we're trying to prove. I do know that BD is congruent to itself. So that's what I'm going to have next. BD is congruent to BD. That's the reflexive property. Now, I have three pairs of sides congruent, that's SSS. So I can say that my triangles are congruent. I need to be very careful with writing my congruency statement. So I'm going to say that ABD is congruent to CBD. Now that I know my triangles are congruent, I can say that their corresponding parts are congruent. So now I can say that angle A is congruent to angle C. The reason is CPCTC. They're corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So that's how this theorem is used. If two triangles are congruent, their corresponding parts are congruent. So let's flip the page and look at another proof, please. Okay, so here is another proof. This one, I'm going to start with you, and then I'm going to let you finish it. So first thing, I know that angle N is congruent to angle P. That's a given. I'm going to actually say given in the figure. I know that NM is congruent to PQ. That's also given in the figure. Okay, ultimately I want to prove that LM and LQ are congruent. I do not know that to be true, so do not assume it to be true. Right now, I just need to worry about proving the triangles congruent. So, pause the video 
and continue this on your own, I will tell you that you will need three more statements. In statement four, your triangles will be proved congruent, and in statement five, you're going to use CPCTC. Try. Come back when you are done, please. Okay, let's see how we did. I left you with trying to figure out how these triangles are congruent. So right now I have a pair of angles and I have a pair of sides. Is there anything else about the figure that I know to be true? Hopefully you wrote down that these angles were congruent. So angle NLM is congruent to angle PLQ because vertical angles are congruent. So hopefully you spotted that. Now we can say that our triangles are congruent. Careful of the ordering, I'm gonna say NLM is congruent to PLQ. You do not have to have the same exact congruency statement that I do, but your order should be the same. As for the reason, we have two pairs of angles and we have a pair of sides. They are not the included sides, so this would have been AAS. Now I can say that LM is congruent to LQ by CPCTC. So hopefully that one went well for you. If not, that's okay. You have one more chance to prove yourself in example four. Okay, so first thing we are asked is to prove that angles one and two are congruent. First thing that I want to do is have you cross these out and move them. I want that little angle to be one and that little angle to be two. So I'm not referring to those right angles. Okay, so we're proving angles one and two congruent. We're going to be using CPCTC. So we're going to have to prove that two triangles are congruent. Now these angles are part of this triangle right here. And then this triangle right here. So it might be beneficial to us to redraw these triangles. So I have KGF, which has this angle 2 and a right angle. And then I have FGH, which has this 1 and this right angle. And I also know that K and H are congruent. Okay, I'm going to start by writing down, or I'm going to continue by writing down my givens. I know that angle K is congruent to angle H. That's given in the figure. I also know that angles F and G are right. That is given in the figure. Okay, so I have right angles. There's a ton of different ways that these right angles could help me. So in order to give myself some direction, I'm going to write down my congruency theorems. Okay, so here's the five that I can use to prove that triangles are congruent. Anytime that you have right angles, our mind automatically is drawn to HL. So I need to think, do I think I'm using HL in this case? Well, looking at statement one, I have a pair of congruent angles. Angles have no place in HL. HL has to do with hypotenuses and legs. So HL is not what I'm using here. Because I have a pair of angles, I'm not using SSS either. So I'm either going to use SAS, ASA or AAS. Now, these right angles, if I were doing a proof of HL, would help me prove that the triangles were right. In this case, I'm not doing HL. I don't need right triangles. So I'm going to say that the angles are congruent. So I can say that angle F is congruent to angle G. The reason is that right angles are congruent. So looking at our figures, I know that F and G are congruent. So, so far I have a pair of angles and I have another pair of angles. This is where I'm going to leave you. I would like you to pause the video and finish this on your own, please. You will be using all three statements. 
Prove the triangle is congruent, and then prove angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Good luck! Okay, let's see how you did. So for right now, you should have noticed that we're not going to be using SAS, that you were going to use ASA or AAS. So you should have been on the lookout for a pair of sides. Hopefully you noticed that both triangles have this side FG. So FG is congruent to FG by the reflexive property. At this point, you could have said that triangles FGK was congruent to triangle GFH by AAS. Two pairs of angles and a pair of sides, but they were not the included sides. Then you could have said that angle 1 was congruent to angle 2 by CPCTC. Hopefully that went well for you. If not, that's okay. This is confusing. We will have an opportunity to do some more of these in class. What we learned in today's video is that we proved parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So again, CPCTC is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Make sure you have that memorized. You do have one last problem on the next page. This is the last problem that you are doing on your own. So the givens are in the diagram. You want to prove that angles DAB and BCD are congruent. So best of luck. You may want to look back to section 4.5 to see how to, to start this problem. Remember that you need to start by proving the triangle is congruent. Then you can use CPCTC. As a hint, this is similar to example number 5 on page 19. I will check this when you come to class tomorrow.